afternoon. My name is Jonathan Race. I'm the Cyber Range Architect at the Georgia Cyber Innovation and Training Center. This is my coworker. I'm Alan Cantrell, the Cyber Range Building Master here at the Georgia Cyber Innovation and Training Center. Today we're going to be presenting and giving a workshop on OpenStack Heat uh, titled Let's Build Everything. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to talk about the objectives, so what you guys are going to get out of this. We're also going to look at heat orchestration overall. We're going to dig into what is hot. Um, so not being hot as far as the weather, but hot as far as heat orchestration templates. And you guys are going to get some hands-on experience uh, building your own. But this is talking about the set of resources that are created and what relationships exist between them. We're going to go a little bit more into heat and what it entails. And not only that, we're going to allow for a workshop period where you guys will actually um, have your own environments. You will be able to build your own template, your own in, your own stack, and you're going to deploy that uh, multiple times. Uh, after that, we'll go ahead and have uh, some time for questions as well as summarizing anything. So during throughout, if you guys have questions, um, feel free to raise your hand or ask, and we'll make sure to reiterate it. That way the, the microphone gets it, uh, picks it all up. All right, so let's talk about the objectives. So we're gonna understand by looking at the fundamental concepts and principles of heat orchestration. Uh, we're gonna have you design and create heat templates, and that's gonna automate deployment of instances, volumes and networks, and several other resources. Um, you're gonna gain some practical experience through these hands-on exercises that you're given. We're gonna mess up a few things, we're gonna troubleshoot it, and learn how to resolve some common issues. And hopefully you get the understanding that there are benefits to heat orchestration when it comes to infrastructure management. And then in the end, we we'll show you some additional resources and some things that have in the community that help keep ongoing learning and exploration of heat orchestration. So what is heat orchestration? What does it allow us to do and what does it provide? Well, heat overall, it's a, it's a combination of various open source, you know, whether it be open source or closed source tools that exist. Um, so if you're in AWS, you have cloud formation, uh, there's other, other automation and orchestration tools out there such as Terraform, um, Puppet, Chef, and in particular with, uh, with templating and particularly heat template, there's what's known as uh, TOSCA or T-O-S-C-A, and that kind of defines the, the, the structure of parameters of how uh, the template needs to be organized and structured. So the benefit that we have with heat is um, as an OpenStack project is it combines a lot of the best parts of each of these different types of tools into one specific one dedicated to OpenStack. So you get benefits of what Terraform has, of what Puppet has, of what Chef has, um, but it's all integrated specifically into OpenStack to interact with all the other underlying services for deploying servers, um, software-defined networking, um, and then not only that, but tracking the deployment of the management of uh, of the all these resources within the OpenStack cloud environment. All right, some of the key features coming with heat are the template-based approach. So the way you write a heat template is defined in YAML, yet another markup language. It's a declarative template, and this is how you define your cloud infrastructure. You also have integration with configura man configuration management tools, so you can achieve a unified approach to infrastructure and application management. So you can incorporate some of the other tools like Ansible and Terraform into this if you'd like. You can use uh, several different resource providers. So you can manage provision specific cloud resources and interact with provider APIs, whether it be AWS or OpenStack. Uh, and there's reusability and composition. So when you start building these templates, you'll start seeing that they build like building blocks. So you can take and combine these pieces and construct different types of application architectures pretty easily. Also, there are rolling updates. So once you've defined a template and you've defined your resources in your environment, if you ever want to update those resources, all you have to do is update that stack template and it'll change based off the template as it sees the uh, changes in the template. So really, it, you know, it means you don't have to destroy everything just to rebuild it. So if you have a persistent infrastructure that you want to keep up and you just want to provide enhancements later on or adjustments based off of uh, customer needs or your own personal needs, you're able to then apply those without with little to little to no disruption depending on what's being updated. So what is heat? Um, you guys may have some experience with uh, heat templates themselves, but we're going to dig into the main structure, right? So when we look at heat templates, uh, you'll see here we have some uh, 
some fun little QR codes for you. So you'll see these little dinosaurs pop up throughout and all that's gonna provide for you is the ability to um, go straight to whatever documentation we're referencing, as well as uh, easy access to some of the environments. So what does heat look like? What does a template look like? Well, it's broken up into um, major sections. Right here, we have parameters. You have resources. So parameters are, those are like your variables. Resources, those are the, the things you actually want to build. So the, the actual components themselves. Um, outputs, those are gonna be the values that you want to get back. So after your environment deploys, there may be some static parameters or, or variables within the environment, such as IP addresses, maybe secrets, whatever it may be, that you want to be able to access after you deploy it. Um, so that way you can gain access to whatever the systems are or whatever the services that you provision. Not only that, conditions is one of the other main sections. And this allows you to um, define your heat template so that way um, you can have conditions of, let's say you have a development and a production environment. Well, you can have cases in there or logic in there that allows you to um, define a specific value or it's going to look for a specific value. And if that value is true or if that condition is met, it will deploy development. If it's not met, then it will deploy production. So it just allows you to reuse your template for multiple use cases. Um, and there you can see there, I'm going to GitHub uh, to OpenStack's own repositories for heat templates. There are hundreds of different types of pre-made templates for different scenarios, whether it be building a database server, a web server, or deploying various types of environments and scenarios. Um, so it gives you kind of a starting bed of, well, what does a template look like and how do I do specific things? So first up, we have parameters. And as Jonathan said, that defines the variables that are used throughout the template. It's kind of obvious you might define here would be a username or password, um, an instance size or flavor, an image or an IP address. It makes sense to put these here because you refer to them throughout the template. If I have a super strong, uh, long string and a password, I don't want to retype that over and over again, so I can just refer to it in the parameter section. So not only that, as we look at the parameters, inside parameters you also have what's called parameters group. And, and what this does, this is really just for a, a visual aspect. It doesn't have any major function besides for when you deploy this via the GUI. Um, it allows you to put your parameters in specific orders or group them so that way you know which params are for what. So in this case, right, we have the parameters that we just saw, of the username, password, the image, flavor, and network. But what we've done is we've grouped them into sections of username and password. That's probably related to user information. The second one being image flavor and network, you can actually set that label and, and description to say, hey, this is for a particular server inside there. So you can group all your parameters so that way if, you, if you're not sure which ones to update or how you're gonna uh, adjust the template later, well, you can actually go in and this is a good way to keep track of which parameters belong to which, uh, which resources within your template. All right, we also have resources. So this is where you define the resources that you're gonna have in your template. Uh, things like your compute instance, the server that you're gonna deploy, your networks, so what are the name of those networks, your subnets and your IP addresses, your CIDR, your gateway IP address, software configurations, um, storage volumes, containers, security groups. You define all these resources in the resources section. And what you see here on the right side, this actually provides an example of what that looks like. So this is an example of defining a network as well as a subnet within your heat template. So we can see here, based off of this, that our admin state of the network is gonna be up. So it's gonna be, on, or it's, gonna, it's true. So it's gonna be online, meaning it's gonna, it's gonna be usable. For your subnet, you can see that we define OS Neutron subnet. That's, a, that's the type of resource that it is. Um, but what that allows you to do is you can see here we've defined the CIDR, we've just we defined the gateway IP address that all of the instances that are assigned to that subnet will get. You also see that when we say that network ID, we're using this cool little function that we're going to talk about later that lets us pull the um, the resource ID associated to that network so we can link both of those resources together. Not only that, we can define custom DNS, um, define whether we want to use DHCP or static IP addressing. Um, for specific resources, but 
it allows you to define all those specific properties related to each of those resources. So when we look at that, digging into it, well, one of the benefits is, and one of the things that you guys are going to be able to dig into is, is uh, working with what's called the OpenStack Nova project, and particularly user data. So with any orchestration, right, especially with heat, we sure we want to deploy networks and subnets and other types of resources. But one of the key things we want to do is we're going to we're going to go ahead and deploy um, virtual instances themselves within this cloud environment. So as you can see here on this example, this is kind of combining a whole bunch of things. But we have um, the, uh, the resource type of server, so OS Nova server, defined right here. And then we can see the various properties to where we're defining the image type, the flavor, that being the um, virtual CPUs, the RAM, the hard disk size. Um, you can see here where we're defining the network port. So we can define another resource that exists in our template in order to have this have this uh, server get an IP address and get specific configuration settings, but in particular within resources and for server and for servers, what we can define is what's called the user data. So this is where we pass in the actual configuration. So if it's a Windows system, if it's a Linux system, there's various types of formats of data that we can pass to it to say, hey, we want you to configure using these specific parameters. So we have items such as cloud config which is similar to ANZL, it's YAML format. It lets you define, it's, it's very structured and it has its own structure on what you can configure on the system. Um, other than that, you can also use native language. So if it's Linux, you can use Bash. If it's Power or Windows, you can use PowerShell, such as you see there with the bin Bash and then the PS1 native. You can actually use just basic scripting to configure these systems to, to do whatever you want them to do. Um, as well as you can see here where it does that get resource and we're talking about software config. That's another type of resource to where we can have a system build and we can reference multiple different types of configuration that we want to feed into that one system instead of just being a very linear one, you know, one, do, one item script. So this is just showing us uh, some different types of, of user data and, and how that will look out in that first line. Um, but what that allows us to do is really be able to build any type of system that we want through the means of orchestration. Right. We also have outputs, and this exposes certain values. So those values being the, the username you define in the parameter section, as an example here. We have outputs that describe the username with a description username, and it grabs the value from parameters for username. So you may want to know that. You may want to know the password of this stack. Um, he has this IP address, and he has this private IP address. Oftentimes, when you're developing these templates, you'll have what's known as a floating IP address get assigned to a resource. Well, if that floating IP or one of those other IPs are assigned from DHCP, you won't necessarily know that from just looking at the template. However, outputs will grab that information and display it after the stack is built. And what this also does is you can see here where we reference some of these values of that get at that get adder or get attribute or get param, right? We're pulling those parameters and we've we we've, we've predefined those when we deployed the stack, right? So it'll it'll give us the parameter based off of what we fed to it when we built the stack. That get attribute, what that's gonna actually do, it's gonna look for that resource. So it's gonna look for my instance and it's gonna look for that actual IP address. So it's gonna look for that first address or in this case, if we are putting this, this uh, virtual instance in a private network, um, it's gonna actually let us pull the private IP address that's associated to that system. So even if we don't know what the, the, the configuration is gonna be, that's where we say these outputs can give us the that volatile information, that temporary information that only exists um, when this stack environment exists. Uh, so an example of how that actually looks is um, within the, the GUI of OpenStack. We're going to see an example and you guys are going to get access to your own environment. It's going to go ahead and let you um, do what's called stack preview. And as you see here, it's like, well, how do I know what the dictionary or what the list is to pull the IP address or to pull a particular value if I use, let's say, get adder. Well, using the stack preview function, and even from the CLI, you can use stack preview, it lets you see all the attributes associated to this system. So I can see QoS policy ID, I can see um, allowed address pairs, I can see fixed IPs. So I can see what those attributes are. That way I can then 
call it with that get attribute um, function. All right, conditional statements. So this is pretty cool. This is what we talked about earlier, where you can provide some flexibility in your environment. Much like Jonathan was saying, if you have different software configurations, you can define one single OS Nova server and then have it reference multiple software configurations based on a condition of whether they're in production or it may be developed. Um, this can be several different things, software config, or perhaps a different size image, so a different flavor, or even a different image itself. So maybe it's Kali Linux for one instance, or it's Ubuntu for another. So after talking about, you know, the various aspects of, um, of, of a heat template, Right. It's great to, to maybe hear about these different types of, of uh, sections within a heat template, resources, outputs, conditions, parameters. But one thing that we want to also do is we want to provide the ability to be able to visualize your heat template. Now, this is uh, what's called Topology Graph. This is a tool that, that was created here at the Cyber Center. Um, the primary developer on that was one of our interns here, uh, Marcus Corelli. And what it allows you to do is pretty much you can take a heat template that you're developing you can go to the website you can upload it or you can copy and paste the contents to be able to visualize it so right here on gitlab under ga cyber center you'll see the link here to get to the actual gitlab repo um, as well what we also want to do is why don't we go ahead and try to um, interact with it um, to see what it actually does for us so right here, this uh, QR code will will let you will let you navigate there. This is going to take you to um, topology.gacyberrange.org, and we'll show you what that looks like. To where um, it gives a couple different functions here. Um, as I said, this is at topology.gacyberrange.org, and we'll zoom in just a little bit. Uh, but it gives you the ability. Um, that's kind of uh, intrusive on the eyes. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to dark mode here. Um, but it gives you the ability to, as I said, you can select a file and upload it, or you can even come here and you can copy and paste your heat template in there. So in regards to this workshop, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to navigate over to the workshop, the workshop uh, page itself, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take the uh, template itself. I'm going to copy it and we're going to go ahead and use this function area over here. And because I know there is one issue with this template right off the bat, I'm going to delete this second description. And then just to make it even better, I'm going to go in here and I'm also going to grab the resources for this security group. And we're going to go ahead and mesh these together. So that way I get not only the um, the, the main range environment itself or that, that infrastructure, I'm going to go ahead and get the associated security groups with it. And what I can see now that I have put that in there, I can see various pieces of data. I can interact with it. I can scroll with it, but it gives me information about this environment. So I'm going to go ahead and click lock nodes and you'll see it'll stop it from moving. I can drag these around wherever I want. But a really cool functionality of this is I can hover over it to see information about that particular resource. So whether in this case it's a server, I can look at the port information, I can see the IP addresses and everything associated, if there's a float IP. Um, but then I have these other items as well that give me some more information. So I can click on show subnets and you'll see that it will show me where the subnet is encased. I can look at show IPs. So instead of getting um, names, I now see that the port has an actual IP visible. So it gives me a really neat uh, network outlook from my system, uh, from my stack, but it still gives me the important links between the various resources. So it gives you that network perspective, but it still lets you see everything that's associated to it in a, in a very logical manner. Um, some other cool aspects is I can do show parameters. And as you see here, this shows me um, which parameters I passed in to um, my stack environment. 
I can also hide the legend, which is over here on the uh, left side, and it shows me the amount of each type of resource I actually have defined in this template. And then the other aspect here is I can actually also go to Tooltips Plus, and you'll see it doesn't really change anything from a visual perspective, but when I hover over the environments, you can now see that I get the user data and some additional properties associated with these uh, systems. So I get, I can see there the user data for configuring this GWACD server, as well as clicking on here, I can see the associated data in the software config for this particular instance. And you can see it, it just uh, prints it all out there so that way you can see exactly, you know, what it's trying to do uh, when, it, when it configures. But this is a cool tool. Like I said, it's not, uh, it's in a version one state of a beta, but we're always looking for contributors. And we're actually looking right now to contribute it back up into the heat dashboard. So that way it can be native in OpenStack um, to not only give you the ability to develop and visualize what your stack is, but as well to um, better visualize your existing stacks in your environment. And that can be found at topology.gacyberrange.org. And the link itself is also within, um, within uh, the presentation here for the GitLab repo. So heat templates in action. So this is where we want to help you guys. Um, we're going to kind of go over, but this is going to be the hands-on workshop portion for you. Um, so we want to make sure that you guys can get access to the environment. And what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to this URL. So everybody in here right now, you can go to training.gacyberrange.org. Obviously, you already have um, existing accounts for guacamole. And we're going to go ahead and give you the ability to, I have already spun up systems for you to interact with. And here's the link for the workshop content itself, workshops.gsmrange.org. You don't have to navigate there. Um, you'll have a link directly to that from your virtual instance um, within, uh, within Guacamole. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, give you the, the time and opportunity to go through these. We're going to demonstrate really quick um, an example uh, stack environment. And, uh, and then we're going to turn you on to these activities. So prior to us um, doing the uh, demo, I'm going to turn it over to Alan to do that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recap really quick um, the activities that you guys are going to be doing, and then we'll finish off with doing um, just a quick demo to show you some of the aspects and familiarization, and then we'll turn it over to you to do those activities. So the first activity that you're actually going to do is going to be deploying your own template. Um, and, and you're going to walk through how to do it via the, the GUI as well as via the command line. Your second activity that you're going to have available to you is you're going to deploy and define your own network infrastructure. So you're going to start from scratch and build your own network infrastructure. After that, you're going to go ahead into the third activity and you're going to focus more on customizing your server. So you're going to have to add your server. You're going to have to add a port. You're going to have to integrate it together. You're going to define your own custom user data. And then the very last one is going to give you the opportunity to experiment yourself. So you're going to be able to, based off of that template that you built up to this point, you're going to be able to, let's say, add in a condition statement or add in some outputs, or maybe even you need to add in a security group. That way you can interact with and access your system uh, remotely, um, depending on what it is, whether it's a web server or you just want to be able to terminal into it via SSH. But it's going to give you that capability. But what you guys are going to see is when you log in, you're going to go to Heat Workshop. So when you're on the training.gacyberrange.org website, you're going to go to the Heat Workshop and you're going to go ahead and choose one of the Heat Workshop systems that isn't currently in use. So I'm on 127 and you're just going to click on it. And what it's going to do, it's going to take you into your environment. You may have to log in and you use that Vancouver password. So you use uh, Vancouver 23. And it'll log you in and you should see something similar to that. All right, so let's take a look at OpenStack dashboard. All right, so you're gonna be using this through the CLI, but also the dashboard itself. So if you take a look at your desktop, you should have Cyber Range Workshops and OpenStack dashboard. So double click on OpenStack dashboard, and it's gonna take you to your DevStack dashboard on the local machine. Give it just a moment. I was already logged in, so I'll log out. All right, 
So to log in to the dashboard, you should be greeted with this page and you'll use the username admin. Your password is Vancouver23. All right, let's take a look at a couple things. So this is the overview of your DevStack instance. You also have orchestration, which is an area that we plan around with the most, especially stacks. And this is where you go to deploy the stack in the GUI. To deploy a stack in the GUI, you click launch stack, and you can specify a file and choose the file, like so. Or you can use direct input and copy and paste directly into template data. You'll click next and follow the prompts. There'll be examples of this in the workshop files. Another thing you can look at here is you can look at compute and your images. So you'll have two images available to start with. You'll have Cirrus and you'll have Jammy Cloud Image AMD64. So this is Ubuntu 2204. So if I want to launch an instance, I can click here on launch instance and take a look at a couple of the parameters we have. This is where you would name an instance, give it a description, several different flavors that are available to you by default. And this specifies the virtual CPU count you will allocate to an instance, the amount of RAM, the total disk size, and also networks. So that's how you interact with the OpenStack GUI. Also, you'll be interacting with it with the CLI. So to do that, you need your credentials. On the top right corner, you'll see admin. Click the drop down, you'll see the OpenStack RC file. Click that. And it will download the open RC file. Then in the terminal, by default, it's going to download that to your downloads folder. So we'll navigate there. All right. You'll notice that demo open RC, the sh file that we downloaded is located there. So we need to source that to interact with OpenStack from the command line. So we'll say source demo. OpenRC.sh. It's going to prompt us for our password once again. So we'll just type Vancouver23. All right, and you'll be greeted with this. So, some things you can do from here are OpenStack, flavor list to take a look at the flavors. All right, so the different sizes of instances. Just like in the GUI, it displays the same thing, but it gives you this nice little table in the command line. Also take a look at your images as well. All right, so there's lots more to discover, so I'll let you get back to the workshop and play around. So once again, as you guys go to finish up the rest of the workshop, uh, this is the link for the workshop content. That's the default password for the systems and the DevStack environment. So as we go through, once again, that very first activity is going to be just getting familiar with and deploying your actual stack and, and interacting with the OpenStack environment. Activity two, you're going to build your own stack from scratch, starting from the infrastructure. So the network, the subnets, and ports. Um, activity three is, once again, going to take you through actually deploying a server and can, customizing the configuration of that server and integrating it with your, current, with your network infrastructure that you define. And then fourth is going to have you experiment with something new, such as security groups, and then trying to add in conditions and doing some of those more advanced functions within OpenStack. Uh, we'd like to thank you for um, attending this workshop and presentation. Once again, my name is Lord Jonathan Race, and that's my social media handle. And you can use a little dinosaur QR code there to, to view our link, my LinkedIn, as well as my coworker, Alan Cantrell, um, with one of his more known handles, as well as um, the QR code that will take you to his LinkedIn. Yes, thank you. We'd like to thank you for listening and goodbye.